Hey guys, in this video today, I'm gonna go over how to respond to people who are asleep. How to respond to people who just do not understand the way that the world works. Now, if you guys follow my channel, chances are you probably understand a little bit more about the way the world works than the average bear. And sometimes it's a little bit frustrating dealing with people who either just are, are ignorant of something or just who refuse to listen. So that's what I'm going to show in this video. And I'm also going to give you, I think, a little bit better understanding of the way that the world is structured. I think you're going to understand reality a little bit better after watching this video. And in case you don't already know, my name is Chris Shoup, and my channel is all about helping you to be free. So to be free physically, to be free financially, to be free mentally, and to be free spiritually. So if you'd like to have more freedom in your life, then you've come to the right place. Okay, so this is my map of the world uh, in terms of people who are asleep and people who are awake. Now, there's, as, as I see it, there are a lot more people that are asleep than people who are awake. And what I'm talking about here, uh, obviously I'm not talking about literally asleep or awake. What I'm talking about is here are the people that spend all of their time distracted by entertainment. They spend all their time watching football and watching Netflix and, and playing video games. And they just kind of accept everything that's given to them. They uh, go to college because they're told they're supposed to go to college and they believe everything they hear in school and then they go to work and they save in their 401k plan and they expect social security to be there for them when they're they're grown up and you know they trust the healthcare system and they they trust in the TV and the news and they believe that those people have their best interests in mind and they just uncritically accept everything that is told to them uh, and they believe in the the government and the CDC and the UN and the WHO and they just they never bother to question any of this stuff right they just take the official story on whatever whatever happens to be the topic at hand and they're just not really capable of independent thought or at least they've never really used that capability before they don't think critically and unfortunately this is most of most of the world population is, is in this group, in the asleep group. And then there are, you know, a, a comparatively small number that are awake, that have uh, recognized that the official institutions are not necessarily what they say they are, and are not necessarily working for the, the betterment of humanity. Uh, and so these people are, are what I call awake. Now, I can split I can split up this awake category into three separate categories. So, uh, and I'm going to split these up based on the way that they interact with the asleep people. So, we'll have three smaller circles here that represent the three different categories. And so, the first category over here are the people who seek to m use their superior knowledge to manipulate, control, and exploit the people who are asleep. So I'll call this the exploit category, right? These are people that know something more about the world, and so they're gonna use that knowledge to their advantage and use these people as their pawns, right? To help them get money and power and, and physical pleasure. Uh, and now this, the next category are people who just look down on these people, right? That, that see the people who are asleep and say, these people are disgusting, these people are pathetic. You know, uh, I, I can't imagine how, how somebody could be like this, and I feel so superior to these people, right? So this is what I call the disdain group. These are, are people who are not, they're not trying to exploit the people who are asleep, but they just have complete disdain. They don't want to have anything to do with these people and they insult them at every opportunity, right? And then finally, the last group are the people that actually want to help these people up, that actually uh, want to do some good, want to help these people to wake up, right? Because being asleep, being asleep means being manipulated by these people, right? And it's, this, is, this ends in disaster, always. If you are in the asleep category, you are going to be manipulated by the psychopaths that are trying to exploit you, uh, and, and they're going to rob you of everything that you have, and you are going to die alone and miserable with, you know, with them having stolen all your money, <laughs> basically. Uh, so there are the people over here who, I'll, I'll call them the help category, because they would like to help the people who are asleep. 
And so there's kind of this constant tug of war going where uh, the, the exploiters are, are tugging them in their direction. They're trying to keep them asleep for one thing, right? The exploiters do not want these people to wake up. They want to keep them asleep as much as they possibly can. Um, and so that's why these people, the exploiters, put themselves in positions of influence, right? They, they work at the jobs in the media. They control the education system. They are most of the politicians, right? They, they put themselves in these places of power, in the public health institutions, uh, the universities. They, they want to be the ones that are disseminating the propaganda that is keeping these people asleep because if they are asleep, then they can be exploited, right? If these people all wake up, there's no one to exploit anymore. Uh, so the, the exploit people are doing everything they possibly can to bring the, to keep the asleep people asleep, to bring them to their kind of way of wanting them to believe. And then on the other hand, the people that are trying to help are trying to push, pull them in this direction, trying to help them wake up, trying to uh, get them, well, really to, to become awake. And so it's this constant tug of war between the exploit side and the help side, and whoever is, is doing this more effectively um, is, is going to uh, determine the fate of the people who are asleep, basically, right? And you see the people on this side are pulling out all the stops, right? They are, they are taking complete control of the media. Uh, they are censoring anyone who disagrees with them. They've taken over the big tech companies so that they are not allowing alternative opinions from the official story, which is the exploiter's story. It's always the same thing, at least now while we live in this fallen world. And, and so, you know, the, the help people are, are kind of coming up with their own strategies to combat that. And the internet is the biggest, the biggest thing that, that this side has going for them because the, the internet is very difficult to censor. You know, these people are trying their best to be able to censor it, but it's, it's not easy, right? There's still a lot, of, uh, a lot of good information, a lot of true information that gets through the cracks, even though these people try to stop it. And then, of course, you have these disdained people who are just sitting on their high horse thinking about how intelligent they are compared to these stupid asleep people. And these people are doing nothing, right? They're not contributing one way or the other. They're just kind of sitting there uh, aloof. So really, the fate of the world is determined by this tug of war between the exploiters and the helpers. And so I'm going to actually, of these people who are awake, the three categories, I'm going to um, show another diagram that's going to explain a little bit more detail here. Okay, so here are the three categories of people who are awake, people who understand the world as it really is. And so first thing I want to show is the, the difference in motivation uh, between the three. So the... Uh, exploit people, they're out, they're out for power, they're out for money, and they're out for, um, for pleasure, basically. That's their, their ultimate goal. The disdained people, they are out for significance, right? They ultimately, they want that feeling of superiority. They want to feel good about themselves. And then the helpers are, are <clears throat> motivated by altruism, right? They, they, want to do good in the world. Um, probably they're, they're religious and they want to uh, spread the love of God to other people, um, although not necessarily. Uh, so that's the, the um, motivations of each of those. So you could put a psychological name on each of these, by the way. So the exploiters are psychopaths, right? They just use people and, and destroy people uh, for their own gain, and they, in most cases, don't really feel bad about it. So these are, are psychopathic characteristics. Now, the, the disdained people are basically narcissists. They feel great about themselves because they're so much better than other people, and they just kind of stew in their, their feelings of superiority. Uh, and then the, the helpers, I would say, are the really the only healthy thing here. So, you know, if you've gotten the idea that I'm trying to t recommend that everybody be on the helper side, you're right. And by the way, I'm not trying to say that I'm high and mighty, you know. I was in this category for a long time. Uh, and, you know, I still, I still battle with this. You know, I have to constantly kick myself whenever I, I start 
try, judging other people for, for what they know or don't know. I'm going to tell you why that's a stupid thing to do uh, in a little bit. But anyway, yeah, so, so I used to be very solidly in this category, and I'm trying to shift myself to this category. Anyway, so um, another way to, to explain this, by the way, and this is, this is really interesting to me, that people who are out for, for power, money, and pleasure... That's actually, these, these represent three different, different um, portions of the brain. You can actually map this neurologically. So these are people who live in what's called the reptilian brain. Right, this is what psychologists call it. If you are, the, the motivations for pleasure, for food, for sex. And I mean, if you want money and you want power, that's so that you can extend your pleasure into the future, right? So these are motivated by what's called the reptilian brain. Now, I think this is interesting because you hear some people talk about the, you know, the world is run by reptilians. Uh, and I always thought that those people were just out of their minds. But then I thought about this and, you know, the, these are, the, the world really is run by people who are, are, uh, motivated by their reptilian brain, who are, who are controlled by the reptilian part of their being. And if you think about in, um, in dreams and visions, people, people see images that are based on archetypes, right? And so there, these, I, I think these theories come from people's dreams and visions where they see that the people in control have reptilian-like features, right? And so what I really believe that that is is that they're seeing an archetypical representation of these people based on what their motivations are. And their motivations are mostly reptilian. So the, actually the image makes a lot of sense. Now if you go over to the disdain side, these are the uh, people who are motivated by the mammal brain, right? These are people that, that are motivated by pride. They want to feel their status higher than other people. Uh, and so this is a, a little bit more evolved, the next structure in the brain called the mammal brain, which cares about the person's, um, person's position within a, a social group, right? And that's kind of the main motivator. And then uh, th the, the people over here are motivated by the neocortex, the human brain, right? These are the people that actually uh, have a, a higher order level of, of motivation about this. Another way to think of that is the, uh, the id, the ego, and the superego, to put it in Freudian terms. And so this is what controls the world. Uh, really, in, in one simple chart, this is what controls the world. And it's a constant tug of war between the exploiters and the helpers, always trying to, to bring the uh, asleep people towards their preferred outcome. Uh, and now, I, I want to explain why I believe that we should all be always trying to be on this side, right? And you know, we're gonna fail sometimes, we're, we're just human, we're not perfect. And by the way, you know, when I say uh, awake and asleep, those are kind of a continuum, right? You know, awakening is a process. Maybe you, you realize one thing that you were told that was a lie, and then it starts a kind of a cascade of, of recognizing that other things, that the official story wasn't true. Uh, and so it's, you know, it's not like any, really any person is completely asleep or completely awake. We all have our blind spots. So for one thing, I mean, we should, we should understand that and, you know, not try not to judge the, the people that are, that have different blind spots than we do. But then also think about what is the impact that you're having on the world, right? In this, in this example, if you were an exploiter, you are harming the world. You are harming other people. You are having a negative impact in the world. You are making the world worse. If you're a, a disdainer, then you're not really doing anything. You're just kind of a useless lump. You are, you are insignificant to the world, which is ironic because if you're looking for significance, you are being completely insignificant, right? And then um, if you're a helper, then you're actually, you're actually making things better. You're making life better. And so... Uh, you're gonna, at some point, everybody is gonna have to square with this. Everybody is going to have to be held accountable for which category they have put themselves in, right? Like that, that <laughs> I think it's from Spider-Man, they say the, the with, great, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, knowledge is power. If you are awake, you have great power and you have a responsibility to use it for good, 
right? Um, this is kind of like, actually, it's very similar to the, the story in the Bible where Jesus talks about the three men who were given, uh, given money by their master. And then one of the, one of the men uh, invests the money and gets a bunch of money in return. And so he's kind of like the helper. One of the men invests the, the money poorly and gets a little bit of money in return. So he's more like the disdainer. And then one guy just loses the money. Um, <laughs> and so he's like the exploiter. Like things are, are worse in his case. And so at some point, we're, we're all going to be accountable for that. Judgment day is going to come and, we, and God is going to ask us, what did you do with that superior knowledge that I gave you? What did you do with those gifts that I gave you? And so what are you going to say? Are you going to say, I exploited people? I manipulated people? I ruined people's lives because I thought I had a right because I was smarter than them? Or are you going to say, I just didn't do anything. I just looked down on people and felt good about myself and, and sneered at people? Or are you going to say that I, I took what, what you gave me, I took the gifts that I was given by God and used them to help other people up? Which one of those do you, is, do you want to be able to say uh, when you are held accountable to God? Hopefully the last one. And by the way, since um, I, I want to talk about too why this just it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to disdain people who know less than you. It doesn't make sense to disdain people who are still asleep because the truth of the matter is that probably at some point all of us were in that situation or possibly all of us would have been in that situation were we uh, subject to the same upbringing as the people that we are disdaining, right? So to, to get this idea that we're superior to those people is, is just not right. I mean, it's like a a grown adult feeling superior to a three-year-old child because you know more things than the child does. It just doesn't make any sense. It's not a fair comparison. Uh, and so if you have that disdain, then, you know, if, if you think about if you saw somebody who is sneering at a three-year-old because they didn't know how to do calculus, uh, what would you think of that person, right? You would, you would probably not think very highly of that person. So, you know, I mean, I'm saying this, by the way, as a reminder to myself, because again, you know, this is something that I've definitely struggled with. Uh, but think about that. It's that you, you have absolutely no idea how far along somebody is in their spiritual journey. You know, we, we have this limited lifetime on earth that tends to frame our entire point of reference. Uh, and we don't realize that there's this much, much longer spiritual lifetime. And so it could be that the person that you were looking down on is really just a child uh, in, you know, in terms of the spiritual lifetime. And so they might be the smartest child on earth. You know, they, they might be the, the smartest three-year-old in the pre-kindergarten classroom. You just have no idea, and so it does not make sense to have disdain for those people. And again, I'm, I'm like t telling this to myself. I'm watching myself on the camera screen, like lecturing myself on this, uh, because, you know, I have a hard time with this. But anyway, so I hope that's helpful. And I promise that if you were, if you were in this category, uh, you will have so much better interactions with people. If you can kind of have compassion for people's ignorance or people's lack of, of understanding for people's weaknesses, then you're going to be much, much more, much happier for one thing, and you're going to be much more effective in bringing people to the state of being awake. So if you're kind of, you know, a lot of people in this disdain place, they feel very isolated. Uh, they feel like, you know, if you watch that, that show, The Big Bang Theory, where these guys are are so smart and they just completely don't connect with the other people. Uh, it, well, especially Sheldon, right? Because he's, he's totally a disdainer. He just looks down on all the people that are dumber than him. Uh, and he doesn't want to understand them. He doesn't want to have any compassion for them. And so he's completely alone. Nobody likes him, right? So, so you're going to be a lot happier. <laughs> you're going to have a lot more people like you if you're in this help category. And not only that, but when people wake up, if you're, if you're here, you're going to be doing a much better job 
of helping people up than if you're talking down to them and if you feel arrogant, right? So you're going to bring yourself up a lot more company that can be on your level. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up because it makes YouTube like me better. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And I've got a little free gift for you if you're interested. I'll put a link in the description to a free mini ebook called The Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment, which I think you will love. Uh, so I'll put the link in the description. You can get that for free if you would like as just a little thank you for supporting me on YouTube. If you appreciated this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. And I think you would also really enjoy this video. So thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.